Hi, and welcome to the video. We're going to be looking at how to use the stepper widget inside of Flutter. So the article for this video is, as always, over at Developer School. You can see the final project that we'll be building right here on screen. It's both a vertical and a horizontal stepper. We'll be able to step through. And finally, at the end, if we take a look here, you can see we are going to show this alert dialog. So let's jump in and start off by creating a brand new Flutter project by saying Flutter Create and the name of your project. We're going to open this up inside a VS Code. So I expect you to run this and I'll see you inside. As you can see here, we have a very standard Flutter project. We have a class of my app and it's expecting a homepage at the moment of my homepage. Let's just go ahead and make a pages folder and inside of the pages folder, if we can spell, we'll make an account underscore page. So let's make account page dot dot. And then I'm going to copy in a very basic stepper function. So let's just simply copy in at this page and paste it. And then we'll have a look at it after we get everything set up. So I've pasted that in. You can get that in the article or you can just simply copy it in a second. And then I'm going to go back to my main app. And I'm going to say account page. We'll need to import that too. And when we save the file, we should see a very basic stepper. Obviously, we can't, we can actually select steps, but it doesn't move us. We also can't click continue or cancel. So let's start to have a look at this. First off, you can see we have this stateful widget. And inside of the stateful widgets state, we have a list of steps, as you can see here. Each step has a title, it has is active, and the is active just sort of denotes this blue color right here. The state of a particular step denotes the current icon. For example, this one is complete, this one is editing, and this one is error. So we can say step state dot, and then you'll see a variety of different states. We then have content for the step which simply at this moment in time is a column with some text form fields. And when we move down into the build method, we can see that we have this stepper that has these steps as a parameter. So if we hit command click on the stepper, I imagine that will be control click for Windows. We can see that the stepper expects a required steps and also takes some other properties as well, but these aren't actually required. Obviously, in order to use the stepper appropriately, you will actually need to use these functions, but to actually get the stepper on screen, we simply just need to provide the steps. Let's now create the ability to go backwards and forwards inside of our stepper. We'll need a current step equal to zero. We'll also have a Boolean for complete, which we'll look at later on. That's going to be when we're finished on all the steps. We'll then make a next function and we'll say if the current step plus one does not equal the steps dot length. So if we're at the end of our list, then we'll go to the next step or alternatively, we'll set the state equal to complete equals true. We'll create the function called go to for the current step next. So go to will simply have an integer of the step which we want to go to. And inside of this, we can just say set state. And we want to set the current step equal to that step. So that's just going to set the state of our step. And finally, we'll make a cancel. And cancel will say if the current step is greater than zero, then we'll go to the current step minus one. So that will essentially take us back one in the list of steps. Now that we've got these functions, we need to go down to our stepper and we want to set the current step equal to the current step. We also want to say on step continue, we want next. We then want on step cancel equal to cancel. And finally, on step tapped, which gives us a step to go to 
step. So this, when we save the file, should give us the ability to click continue, to click cancel, and then also to navigate to a particular step. So if we tap around, we should see that we can go to each one of these steps. Let's now use the stepper type to change how the step looks. So we'll make a stepper type called stepper type equal to stepper type dot horizontal. Then we'll also make ourselves a new method and that method will be called switch step type and we'll use set state to essentially say if the stepper type is equal to stepper type dot horizontal, then we'll set the state of our stepper type equal to the vertical state, or alternatively, we'll set that equal to horizontal. So now we should have the ability if we make ourselves a floating action button or something else that would want to change this to change that stepper type. So for example, let's now add the type equal to stepper type. And you don't necessarily have to make a method that can change this backwards and forwards. In fact, I probably think that would be an anti-pattern, but nonetheless, we're doing it for the demo. Now let's create a floating action button. So that floating action button can have a child of an icon equal to icons.list. And you can simply put any icons that you want here. And on the on pressed event, we'll have switch step type. So if we save that and select the fab button, you'll see that the stepper changes between the two states. Next up, I want to display an alert dialog if we've completed all of the steps. So I'm gonna copy in from the article, the body content, and then we'll investigate it shortly. So we'll paste that in. And when we save, we should now see when we hit continue at the end that we now have this profile created sort of dialogue right here. We can close that and that will take us back to our stepper. So what we've done here, we have a complete, if that is true, then of course we'll show this expanded alert dialogue, which will say profile created. We'll have that in the center. If we click the close button, it sets complete equal to false, which puts us back on the stepper. Alternatively, at that point in time, we'll simply just show the stepper if we aren't complete. So there's much better ways to handle this, but I just think it's a sort of decent way to end the tutorial. I hope you found the video useful and you go ahead to make some awesome steppers. I'd love to see what you create, of course, inside of the comments section below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And until next time, I'll see you very soon in my next video.